you release the handbrake, you're ready to go. The little pedal to the accelerator, but that is the brake. All right, this, this is in forward go. position. Now all I have to do is accelerate, and I apply the brakes the same as I would any other brakes. Right. You're coasting. Turn on the motor. <laughs> Now this has uh, yeah disc brakes, I guess. Isn't it? No, the, like the, this has uh, a much larger set of brakes than you, come on this really type of car. You mean that the having the electric car requires a heavier set of brakes? Oh, yes. Well, it requires not a heavier set of brakes, but this car is heavier than the original chassis. I see. So this chassis's been beefed up. I see. And you have no uh, motor compression to slow you down so you really close. There's very little chassis oh, friction. The, th the, th the thing is remarkably efficient when you realize that you're running now on under 10 horsepower and you're, you know, you're going with traffic. That's great acceleration too. We're approaching a red light so I'll put mm -hmm. the brakes on. Yes, the, here, here we have a, a car that's, uh, that's quite small and normally lightweight, but it feels tremendously heavy. Now, did you have to get extra heavy tires to go along with the uh, heavy yeah. batteries well, and the load? Everything loads? is in keeping with the weight, which is still moderate. This car now weighs 2,380 pounds. As these cars normally as gasoline production cars are delivered from the factory, they're about 1,680 pounds. So we've added about 700 pounds in converting from a gasoline car design to an electric car design and that 700 pounds incidentally is the weight of the battery that runs this car well this is a real smoothie but there's one thing that the uh, the typical automobile driver will have to get used to i notice when i come to a traffic light and i stop i have the distinct impression that my engine is just stalled out on me well, it's very smooth it's wonderful is this the first time, Joe, you've ever uh, driven an electric car? Absolutely the first time I've ever driven one, and I think anybody could get in and do it in one second the way I just did. Is that the only strange sensation uh, that you've noticed so far, Joe, about uh, the quiet uh, feeling that perhaps your motor's died? Well, I've, uh, I've never driven a Renault car, but I've always imagined them to be quite lightweight. And uh, this seems to be very heavy uh, for, for the size of the car. And, of course, you're very conscious of the heavy batteries. They look like a, a couple of banks of batteries you'd see in a, in, a, in a large cabin cruiser, I would say. Plus that Constavolt charger or whatever they have uh, uh, back in the rear part with the motor. Incidentally, it's not a, an engine. It's a motor, isn't it? Right. I think this is a matter of semantics. That, uh, the motor it really uh, re replaces the engine both uh, as to weight. It's a standoff. The Electric motor has been highly developed in the industry. You know, a lot of people have forgotten that diesel trains and industrial trucks the world over, particularly in the last few years, many, many, all, all, almost all the diesel trains and many, many of the industrial trucks use the electric traction motor, which this car uses. Uh, it's a... Uh, a motor that uh, is very efficient, has been very well developed. It's not the problem in the car. Uh, this motor, with some adjustment to the control circuit in this very car, we could stunt it by going 65, 75 miles an hour. The only rub is that we don't have the battery in this car that will allow it to go far enough to be a practical, everyday on the street car if we do this. We, our range would cut down from the 40 to 50 miles that you could by careful driving at traffic speeds get now or being more practical maybe in the uh, metropolitan stop and go conditions maybe we're talking of 30 to 40 miles of keeping up with traffic hey uh, one thing it's quieter than a Rolls Royce <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, also uh, Joe I, there's no great uh, sensation as far as the people looking at us they have no idea what kind of a vehicle we're driving other than the fact that uh, we might not be be making any noise and I don't suppose they could hear that anyway because of all of the other traffic noise. That's right. That I think is a big point that they might as well get out of their heads uh, an idea that the electric car or the advent event of the electric car implies that some monstrous looking concoction is going to be released on the freeway that it won't have any aesthetical uh, beauty or anything of that nature. On the contrary theoretically this powering setup, this running gear, could be put in any body style you like. Really, you have an advantage in designing an electric vehicle in that the motor doesn't require some of the accessories that the gasoline engine must have to live. You know, the cooling ducts, the radiator, the generator, the accessories that kind of box in the stylus effort. In the electric, 
you do have to make room someplace on the car for the necessary battery and the motor, but you have almost complete flexibility. You could go from that to create something that's far more pleasing and aesthetically uh, advanced and still fu very, very functional without these mechanical constraints that you have when you're trying to lay out a typical gasoline engine powertrain. Oh, oh, this one is. I was pushing this. What is this? Uh, that's a uh, special horn that Mr. Heifetz uh, had a on. Horn? Right? Mm -hmm. uh, at the moment, we have it disconnected. Uh, oh, uh, he no is what he... I didn't get a turn signal out no, of that. That was are... the one you didn't explain to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, these are some of the, the looks, dress-up touches. The steering wheel is a Rolls-Royce Bentley wheel. The uh, dash <laughs> panel is a piece of fine furniture. It's solid, rubbed walnut. The instruments are actually uh, uh, more laboratory grade uh, General Electric ammeters. Uh, I'll say one thing to the behind. people listening as I'm driving this car down uh, Wilshire Boulevard right now we're into Beverly Hills there is not an instrument on the dashboard you'll be able to recognize except the speedometer. Volts and amps and ampers over here and they're all flashing and doing little things and I have no idea what they're doing my amps are pointing to sixty or pointing to zero because you're standing still. The power is off. Well, I was coasting actually then, and the voltage says well it said seventy five until I pressed on the accelerator and there's instant response going down to twenty seven. What does that mean? About thirty five. This means that the batteries are connected uh, when you start up at a lower voltage for lower speed and incidentally much greater range. Then when you get up to traffic speed, if you want to go faster, the batteries are reconnected for a higher voltage. This is part of the speed control. The uh, electric motor is so powerful that if you started out uh, with your full voltage into the uh, motor, it would uh, be a very uncomfortable jerk. So it, the accelerator is uh, fixed so that uh, you start out slowly uh, and in effect go through six gears uh, all automatically as you uh, step down on the accelerator. We've uh, driven just a few miles, uh, Joe. What do you think about the acceleration uh, performance of the electric car as opposed to a gasoline-powered car? Well, it's fine. Anybody who's ever been behind a trackless trolley, uh, they, they have them quite a bit back east. They, they resemble buses, but they're actually connected to uh, an electric line overhead. We'll know that the electric cars do have the power to accelerate rapidly depending on how they're set up. And this particular car is... Uh, set up for a, a relatively soft, easy cruise, I would say, from the feel of it, that uh, 35, 40 miles an hour is really the optimum along in here now. Is that correct? That's right. Uh, it, it's uh, a trade-off between how far we can go on a battery charge with the conventional lead-acid batteries that are used in this car and how fast we go. Uh, one of the things that Mr. Heifetz intends to do and this is rather remarkable because he's doing this not as a public official or as an executive of a large company that's concerned about getting into the business, but as a private individual who is r real dedicated to the, the air pollution problem. He plans to stay right on top of the new developments, and as new batteries become available, he plans and is talking to people who are in this business to use them, to learn more about them, to extend the capability of this car. One of the things he wanted, and we feel he got in this car is a car that mechanically and electrically is able to take advantage of these new developments as they come up. Well, all, all I can say is it'll serve Mr. Heifetz just right if General Motors builds an electric violin player. <laughs> it just like any other car. There's just nothing to it whatsoever. Absolutely nothing to it. Huh. You've had your course and you qualify for your captain's license. <laughs> do I do, do I get an electric license? <laughs> Does anybody know anything about the, what the uh, motor uh, vehicle people have to say concerning uh, electric cars and the licensing and whether they'll be cheaper to use and cheaper to license, that kind of thing? Well, uh, this particular uh, this particular car is is licensed by the Department of Motor Vehicle. At the moment, uh, they treat them just as a gasoline uh, vehicles. There's no difference. The reason why I mention this is because in many cities, the operators of electric trolley cars do not have to have driver's licenses. Of course, they're fastened to a track. Maybe that has something to do with it.
Actually, I'm just trying to turn around here and put it in reverse. No. And here we go in reverse now, just like any other car. I feel like I'm in on an historic occasion, Al. <laughs> well, uh, Joe, uh, we've reached the destination, uh, and you've uh, taken your first ride, your first drive in the electric car. Uh, what do you think about it? When can I have one delivered? <laughs> and that was it. Joe Pine's uh, first ride and first drive in an electric car, proving that, in fact, they do work down Wilshire Boulevard. Al Wyman reporting for Metro Media News. seems to me that no matter what you do, if you do it well, or if you do it better than somebody else, you should take pride in it because that is an achievement. Many things have started with a dream. That was one of those because people said I was crazy to do this. How can you do it? Electric car. It's silly. You're wasting your money. I mean, it's... But when this car was first built, it was the first passenger car on this coast. Well, it looks just like any other car. This uh, instrument panel is a little different. Uh, what do we do, Mr. Barsoff? Uh, we turn the key on, move the selector That's lever right here. Yes. You move the selector lever up to forward. Release right. the parking brake. All right. Okay, and you're ready to go. The accelerator is on your right, and the larger pedal is the brake pedal. That's just all this, there is to it. Just this one here. Uh, to the right of the foot brake. Right. All right, here we go. Silent. Assemblyman Hayes, is this the uh, first time you've ever driven an electric car? Yes, it is. It's the first time I've ever been in one. What kind of a sensation uh, can you describe driving one for the first time, being in one for the first time? Well, it's uh, no real difference from driving except... Uh, the uh, sensation of being able to hear the the tire noise and that's the only noise in the car seems a little surprising but it's uh... it's a pleasant surprise what, what do you want? think about uh, the lack of noise does this bother you at first <laughs> the fact that you don't hear any engine noise only the whir of the tires well of course we're accustomed to a, a noise of some kind to indicate that the motor is running and uh... it does take a little bit of uh testing here to be sure that I know I have some acceleration here in the traffic. We're right here on this main thoroughfare and I'm ready to move and there it goes. No, it is, it is an, an unusual sensation to begin uh, operating an electric vehicle this way where you don't have a motor that's making a noise that you can understand and identify. Well, we've um, now moved right out here onto Ventura Boulevard. Uh, do you find this car any harder to handle uh, than a gasoline-powered vehicle? No, there's no difference in the handling at all. It apparently is uh, an identical uh, chassis to the other type of vehicle, and it appears to be just uh, equipped with the electric vehicles, that is, the batteries, uh, to operate it that way. Otherwise, it seems to be a, a standard type of automobile. Well, the lights changed and uh, we're moving right out, uh, right along with the flow of traffic. We don't uh, seem to be having any problems. No, it accelerates beautifully. Uh, I'm going about 28 miles an hour here and it got up to this speed uh, just as quickly as I would want it. I know that next week uh, in Sacramento, the Assembly Transportation Committee, of which you are the vice chairman, plans to hold some further hearings on the topic of smog. Think you're going to be finding out anything more about electric cars? And uh, do you think that your experiences in driving this electric car will uh, benefit uh, the questions you might be asking concerning this? It certainly will provoke uh, my thinking in the direction of uh, asking questions about development of electric cars. We're going to be examining the whole field of the effect of the internal combustion engine on air pollution. 
and uh, the effectiveness that we are presently experiencing with our smog control devices in controlling emissions from internal combustion engines. We're also going to go into the entire subject of whether it's possible to uh, continue to live with the increased amount of internal combustion emissions that are going to be uh, coming off the additional automobiles that will be flooding in over the next 10 to 15 years. This whole subject is going to be explored and of course the subject of the electric car and how feasible it's going to be is going to be a primary source of our concern in the committee meetings. Well, uh, after having driven several blocks, do you think if a car like this were uh, manufactured and uh, in mass marketing uh, and sold for a reasonable price uh, that it would stand a chance of competing with the internal combustion engine cars just uh, on a car-to-car -car basis? Well, I can't see why it wouldn't. It seems to be very operable. Uh, I'm making a turn here in the heaviest traffic in this area and having no problems keeping ahead of uh, the cars, keeping right along with the traffic. And this, essentially, is what people are interested in doing and being able to move along and uh, get from one place, place to another as quickly as possible and still within the traffic rules. I think this uh, car seems to fit within those tests, and I see no reason, therefore, why it wouldn't sell, why people wouldn't buy it. Long Beach Assemblyman Jim Hayes taking his first ride in an electric car, driving for the first time an electric car. This is Al Wyman reporting from Studio City inside the electric car in motion for Metro Media News.